More and more little boys are telling their parents they wish they were born as little girls. It's an emotive and potentially distressing subject that continues to divide opinion and tear families apart. In America, one group of parents have made the controversial step of organizing a secret summer camp for transgender kids and their families. Now, for the first time ever, and after a year of negotiations, the organizers have agreed to open up their doors and allow a film crew into the camp. One of the organizers is mum of four, Sabrina. Camp is a special place where families from around the country can come together and just be, and not have to worry about any of the, you know, what our children face every day. <laughs> Sabrina and her husband Chris first got involved with the camp because they were determined to support their only son, Ryan. When Ryan was born, Ryan was born male, right? Actually the first boy in my family. So he was just like, ah, oh, the boy. Blonde hair, blue eyes, typically boy. And around two years old, we started noticing that Ryan liked, you know, pink and sparkles. And we thought that was sort of strange. <laughs> After a few months, realizing this isn't some phase, my wife started researching it online and discovered this whole community of parents with children that identified as transgender even at an early age. Yeah. At the age of three, Ryan's parents finally accepted that their only son was transgender. It's going to be really fun. So my family didn't understand me because one time my grandma got me a Spider-Man and Batman shirt, and I'm like, I don't want it. And she's like, you like them. I'm like, no, I don't. Mm -hmm. the Before camp, camp right. I thought I was the only person right there. like Spark. how I am, gender variant, because when I went to the camp for the first time, and I was skeptical, and so I was like to my mom, they're not like me. No, they're different. Mom well, just like, no, they're, they're the same as you. They're also, well, I mean, boy wants to be a girl. Ryan no longer wants to be referred to as he. Now age 12, she is dreading the physical changes that come with male puberty wow. and is on the verge of starting hormone-blocking injections to delay it. They were on sale. Wow, yeah, I hope so. 75% <laughs> off, Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> I think the next decisions I have to make, I'm going to take blockers soon. Blockers are shots that help prevent like certain side effects from puberty, like hair in the armpit, like up here, and um, my voice deepening. <clears throat> so far it's not deepening, which I'm happy. I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> blockers will stop Ryan from becoming more manly, making it easier to undergo gender reassignment surgery in the future. The upcoming camp will be a rare opportunity for Sabrina to discuss such huge decisions with other parents. I mean, this was one of Ryan's outfits from a couple years ago. If you have a child that's not picture perfect, cookie cutter, you're gonna have it harder. That's just how that goes. Camp is where you have that freedom to say, you know, this stinks, and I wish it weren't like this, or I feel like this, or how did you work through this? It's very easy to be isolated. It's very easy to create a wall around you. It's just not conducive to you or to your children. Your mouth is all dirty. You know that, I know. With camp just days away, Sabrina and Ryan are heading out to buy supplies. I have the glow sticks already. Uh, bubbles? Bubbles are always fun, right? Well, we get bubble bubbles. machine, like what we did last no, time. No, no, we're not. No, we didn't do a bubble machine last time. Yeah, we did. Unlike boys their age, the transgender children attending camp will be dressing up as princesses and getting makeovers. Better paint. Crown's right here. Yes. At the top of the shopping list are glitter, tiaras, and feather boas. Get ones with glitter on it that are sparkly, will you? Glitter glue and tubes. We got tubes. the crowns. I'm just looking for the fashion show if we need pins. Oh, <gasps> tattoos. 
shoes. Yes! Oh, now this is cool. Look, it's body art, and it's got like stencils. Boas! Who doesn't love boas? Okay. But do you think that this is a good color, or should we get a different color? We have about half the new families that are coming that are new and half that are veteran. And they walk in and they see this table full of things that they feel comfortable with that speaks to them. Beads, fairy dust. All right, good, so we got these. And that's what it is, is you want them to be able to feel like they fit right in. This is their, this is their thing. This, this is their, their domain. This is their domain. <laughs> Girls, come on. Don't hit yourself. No. Nope. This is all for camp. Free camp. Camp. Wow. The camp has its critics, and Sabrina has learned that it's sometimes better to be vague about the details. It's um, a camp for um, families that, you know, have kids who get to just be expressed and safe and fun. <laughs> what did you do? All right, let's go, you. I think we're loaded up good. Five days. We're in, we're in a countdown. Long Five as days. As we That's right. So we're just coming in under the wire and getting everything ready. And there's much more to do. Much more to do. But <laughs> all very much worth it. So it's coming up quick. The camp will welcome children from across America, some attending for the first time, some seasoned regulars for whom camp is the highlight of their year. So this is my dressing table. This is uh, all my makeup, which I use on a daily basis. I don't, just a small bit of mascara, some eyeliner, and a little bit of blush sometimes. Born Max, Maxie wanted to be a girl from the age of two. Now aged 11, this year is her fourth camp. The first time I went to camp, I was like, and I was like, I'm just gonna be quiet and play on my phone and be in a hoodie. And then I met other friends and I was like, oh my gosh. And every year we went back. Last time. There was this thing in the water that was so disgusting. It smelled really bad. And we were like, yeah, we jumped in the water. We're like, ah, we're literally just screaming like, get us out. It was so fun. And we went on the canoes and we tipped over. One of my friends didn't go and I was really sad because I wanted to see him. I think it was a him or a her. I don't know. I couldn't really tell. What should I say? It? <laughs> I don't want to say it. Um, them. Them. I really wanted to see them. At camp, every moment we're like, we're transgender, so we're friends. Like, it has nothing really to do with that. It sort of does, but it's just mostly because we just connect. And I guess it has mostly to do with how we're transgender, but they're nice and they're like... They're just really good friends to have, so that's what makes it. If they were mean and transgender, I probably wouldn't be friends with them. It's like, wow, you're mean, but I guess you're transgender, so we can be besties. Maxie's parents realized they were dealing with a transgender child at an early age. It was clear from the get-go that Maxie had an alternative gender identity. And then when she went to school, and suddenly gender is a huge thing, right? It determines where you're going to line up and mm -hmm. who you're going to sit with and what you're going to be able to do. That's when it really became very distressing. I went into her room, and I was tucking her in, and I saw her doing this. And what she was saying was, dear God, please make me a girl. Let me wake up a girl. I realized that that's how she was putting herself to sleep every night. So far, Maxie has had little trouble passing as a girl. But as she gets older, things will only get harder. And with junior high school starting after camp, rumors are already spreading. I make something up saying that you have a twin brother. Oh, yeah, that was a while ago, right? No, it was a few days ago. You just get scared and then you like... Yeah, yeah and I had to tell okay. her that, so I just wanted to say... Maxie now has no choice but to consider revealing her transgender identity at school. I've been having some trouble. There was going some rumors about me and really dumb rumors that weren't, didn't even make sense. Like, they were really stupid. This is one of the things that I, as a brother, am very nervous about. Now that she's in the sixth grade, because she's about to go through the next three, four, and, and in high school especially, some of the hardest years of her journey, because that's when kids really start to just during this stage where they are, are changing themselves. 
becoming harsher and meaner. It's natural. It happens to everyone, really. Um, and I'm, that's something I'm very nervous about. This year's camp may be Maxie's last chance to be with other kids who accept her for who she really is. In middle school, they're getting to the point where they're starting to understand it more and they're starting to see, like, the surgery and the hormones and all that, which they didn't understand then, and then they're going to be like, what? You know? And they're not going to agree and they're going to be really, like, uh, harsh about it. At camp, life is so different. It's so much better. And it's happier. It's just open and it's... Just like, you have no secrets, you have nothing to hide. Hiding is a way of life for many transgender kids. With bullying and ridicule ever-present fears. But hidden in a forest in America's Midwest, Maxie and others like her can finally feel free. Camp, the transgender children and their families can play as they wish, but it often seems to revolve around one thing. Putting on makeup, put on makeup. Lipstick. The next four days could be life-changing for these children. You know, there's like workshops and there's events for the kids, but more than anything, it is just a haven, four or five days of haven for these families and kids. It's day two at the camp for transgender girls who are born boys. You have to switch chairs, but the person in the middle has to try to get the chair. And Maxie and Ryan are in their element. The camp activities include swimming, dressing up, and arts and crafts, all building up to the big event at the end of the week, the fashion show. But up next for the kids and their siblings is the talent contest. Often transgender kids are withdrawn in everyday life, but here they hog the spotlight. Welcome, welcome to our talent show. We have quite a lineup of talent. Next up, it's camp newcomer Lindsay, who will be singing in public for the first time since changing from boy to girl. The eight-year-old has been preparing for months. Boing, 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 boing. And has even made her own dress. It ends right here and it goes around this side, then it ends in the back, like right here. So, and then it's got a little bit of hang down, and this, and it has butterflies on it. It might represent Katy Perry pretending to be Pocahontas because it's unique. Foot, foot, foot. For Lindsay, singing in front of an audience is a massive deal. I sing in my sleep. I sing while I, I sing while I get dressed. I sing while I, um, eat. I sing while I, while I'm in the car. I sing while I, watch TV. <laughs> I sing while I'm at school. Just a year ago, Lindsay loved nothing better than to perform, but a year ago, Lindsay was very different. At the start of second grade, this was 
my precious Connor. <laughs> this is the before, and here's the after. This is this year. Is Lindsay? This is Lindsay, and she's Connor here, and she is very much going between. Now, this is me singing this as a boy. Now, I'm singing it as a girl. I'm going to sing a boy ABC because I'm a girl. You're going to sing a boy one right now? Since transitioning from boy to girl, Lindsay has felt more comfortable in her own body. But at eight years old, she's still learning about how the outside world might react. She knows that her situation is not usual. She knows that most of the boys feel like boys, and she doesn't. She'll do a lot of quiet things by herself, drawing. She's in her head a lot as well. What's wrong with me is what she said before. And to be able to show her the big wide world, there's a whole great big range of diversity out there. I want to show her with camp that she is not so very different, that there are other people in the world like her. Lindsay has spent hours practicing for her performance in the talent show with her grandmother, Catherine. I don't know what you just said. What did you say? I didn't hear you enough. You can paint with all the colors of the wind. Ah. <laughs> Lindsay, take the microphone out of your mouth, you funny girl. Lindsay's transition from boy to girl has been hard for her grandmother to come to terms with. One year ago, I was pushing back and I wrote a long letter to Carrie and Trevor of all the reasons why this was just not a good idea. My concerns was that she was uh, leading the way for attention and a melodramatic little girl, little boy rather. While Catherine has learned to accept the change, Dad Trevor is still struggling with his only son becoming his only daughter. I grew up in the suburbs of Dublin. Yeah, the foothills of the Wicklow Mountains. What do you think it would be like being back home? Hmm, I have the suspicion that it would, if I was back home, that we would be hiding this a lot more. We'd probably have to change our entire group of friends. The Ireland that I left 10 years ago would not have been okay with this uh, transgender situation. Both myself and Kerry have felt a sense of loss for Connor. I didn't really know how to relate to her anymore. All right, moving on, we have the fabulous Lindsay. You think you own whatever land you land on. The earth is just a dead thing you can claim. was very much all of us as a family accepting uh, Lindsay for who she is. I suppose it was a, f a further affirmation of the fact that Lindsay is Lindsay. When I got up on stage, I just felt This year's returning kids is Maxie. 
Having known she wanted to be a girl since the age of two, camp is one of the only places she can share her secret. I think it's like really awesome how a lot of people get, can get together the same like stuff going on and we can just like be out with it and not like be embarrassed. And that's pretty cool. But as she gets older, looking female will become more difficult for 11-year-old Maxie. Sometimes I think to myself, is it the right thing to be transgender? Like, so many people are hating on you, and so many people spread rumors about you and say it's so bad and horrible that sometimes I think twice, should I just be a boy? Should I just, like, not be who I am? And then it's, I just cry about it and, I talk to them about it and my mom, you know, and that's a lot of the stuff I've been thinking about this year. Being trans can be isolating, and over 40% of adult transgender Americans have attempted suicide, something the camp was set up to try and address. It can also be difficult for parents to adjust to having a transgender child. It's not something that I would have chosen for us as a path. It's hard to, to say, I mean, what, what sometimes you dream of as a parent is your kid is going to excel at some sport or some academic. But if you were to say, you're going to raise a child that's you know, gender diverse and is gonna go through all of the challenges that it takes, it's, it's really difficult. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that upon anyone. Do you agree with everything that No. Sorry. You know, we can't choose. We don't choose any quality that our, our child has. I would wish upon any parent the children that we have. Fair enough. As Maxie and the kids at camp approach puberty, their parents are faced with a decision that few others could even conceive, whether to stop male puberty using hormone-suppressing drugs. How do you make these kinds of decisions for a 12-year-old kid? She could be sterile and, and, oh my God, and what are the long-term effects for estrogen and bone density and all of this stuff? But see, I didn't have any of that. There was no information yeah. at all. So the first time I ever heard of blockers was at camp when I was almost five and they were talking about it and it scared the heck. That, that time we were like, my husband, we turned and said, we're not doing this. Blockers are a divisive topic and kids who go on to transition are unlikely to ever be able to have children of their own. She wants to father a child. I said, well, maybe you'll be with the female who, you know, <laughs> who wants to express as male. <laughs> well, that is so wrong. So you have a mother who's really a father and a father who's really a mother. It's like, how screwed up will that kid be? She's like, I'm not doing that. And I'm like, okay, sorry, Ron, you had it. Sabrina's child, Ryan, has only recently decided to start blockers, but Frank's daughter, Maxie, has been on them for nearly a year. She has no idea. She just wants to feel normal going into school and with her friends and be who she is. We're in the car, driving home, and she just completely falls apart. And she says, I don't want to live. Why did God make me this way? I don't want to live. And just completely you know, sobbing. And you know, it like rips the heart out right. of you because this is not what you want your kid to feel. Yeah. And, um, and we knew, I mean, it was, it, no matter how difficult it is to give a shot, and it is kind of odd to give that shot, she gets uplifted after she has it. Because for her, she was, for our child, she was, um, she tried to cut herself one time. Mm -hmm. She wanted to cut it off. It didn't belong. Hidden away in the American Midwest, a group of unusual children are enjoying a summer camp for girls who were born as boys. Although traditional summer camp activities are on offer, the kids are more interested in making themselves look as feminine as possible. Activities coordinator Callum is working at the transgender camp for the first time. Originally from Manchester, 
He's never met a group of kids like this before. If I were to stay in England, I definitely wouldn't have heard about this. I wouldn't have known about this kind of group, these kind of people. It's upsetting that it makes me feel as though, from where I'm from, I might not necessarily accept this. Temperatures are soaring, and it's time for the trans kids and their siblings to cool off in the pool. When boys become girls, swimming costumes can cause all sorts of issues. Swimming could be a problem for these kids in the fact that obviously girls wear certain bathing suits and if these are young men, certain things might show and certain people might notice and ask questions. And it's obviously a, a big confidence issue, but I found that here they're so open and because they're in such a group, they're all the same. Um, it makes you realise you don't have to um, try and fit into the norm. You can just do what makes you happy. At camp, the children are free to do what they want, and wearing a swimming costume is a huge moment. It's kind of hard to wear a girl's bathing suit unless you have like shorts or a skirt over it. Your part will be noticeable. <laughs> That's the best way I can put it. For the transgender kids at camp, some embarrassment in the pool is only a hint of what's to come. With male puberty about to start, their voices and bodies will become more manly making it harder to pass as girls. 11-year-old Maxi is already taking blockers, the divisive hormone-suppressing drugs that cost nearly £10,000 a year. The medicine is so that she doesn't go through male puberty. And that would just be... Disastrous. Yeah. Every time it's over, I'm always excited. You know, mm -hmm. one step closer to being like a full woman. That's why we, we push through it. At the end of the day, I have a happy child. It's very expensive. And that's a, a lot of the anxiety in giving the injection because it's so expensive, $1,000 a shot. Like injecting crystals in my leg. Mix the microspheres thoroughly by gently shaking the syringe until the powder forms a uniform suspension. You okay? Yeah. I'm a little nervous. Yeah. All right, 90 degrees into the muscle. No blood? Do you feel the burn, Maxie? Um, a little bit. Yeah. Good job, Mommy. Thank you. I felt the burn. It just, it's, it's gotten easier, though. Yeah. Is it possible for it to fall, <sighs> fall out of your leg? Oh, Mommy, thank you. <laughs> it's always the same, but it's always scary. Like you're gonna cry. It's always scary. I often ask myself, are we doing the right thing? But you know, I don't feel like it's been my decision. I really just got out of her way. I just am letting her be who she is. I have this dream of my husband like taking care of me and he's like kissing me every second. Yeah, it's not always about being fabulous and beautiful and sparkly and terrific for you. Oh, no, no, it's no. It's about no. being nurturing and having that kind of receptive feminine oh, energy. Yeah. and Definitely. I mean, there's all of that, too. Yeah, if I only uh, cared uh, about being very extremely girly and being sparkly and being be outfits and everything, then I would be a gay man. But then there's this feeling inside you that you can really tell for sure saying like, girl, 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 this is who you are, you know? For now, blockers mean Maxie can continue to appear feminine and get back to having fun with her friends. Hey, hey, let's go. Oh, no thanks. Wait, 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 I need a proposal. Wow, Caesar! <laughs> I need a proposal, girl. Caesar! Stop! Like every three months. <laughs>
For their short time at camp, the transgender kids take every available chance to appear as feminine as they can. Anything. Oh, no, she actually does good songs. Yeah. Kim Kardashian does nothing. Paris Hilton, nothing. Today, Callum is attempting to engage the kids and their siblings in a more rugged activity. Okay. Paddleboarding. You're going to stand a little bit more forward? Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> but with camp ending soon, some of the kids refuse to let go of the makeup and dresses. Who's your partner? No! Knowing that these were young boys transitioning to girls, uh, it was hard for me to find different activities for them to do which would suit them, basically. They didn't want to do very masculine, very boyish things. Hello. When I work with kids who are transgender, I find that they're just, they're just like every other kid. There's nothing different. A young boy, you know, who thinks he's a young girl and is going through that transition. If he feels as though he is a young girl, he is. He acts the same way, he has the same beliefs, and he just needs that kind of confidence to him so he knows that he's safe. Oh, no, 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 no. After a shaky start, camp first timer Lindsay has found her feet and even picked up a new friend. Isn't this fun? Yes, sort of. Sort of! Tell you what, they may be onto something with this dress thing. Right? With as muggy as it is right now. It's almost the end of camp, and preparations are underway for the biggest event of the schedule, the fashion show. See, exactly. See how it's going to shine on it, and then we're going to have lights and... The transgender children all have their favorite activities, but the fashion show is the most popular. It's their last chance to dress as girls amongst like-minded kids before having to return to their normal lives. The fashion show is really the highlight, what they'll never forget for the whole year long. It yeah. is those moments when they're on the stage doing their thing and applauded. So these two racks are where we put our old dresses when we change. This is body art, so if you want to like, do a design on your skin, on your face, you can do that. And these little beads right here, like stick on the shimmer. Like Maxie, Ryan has decided she'll soon start hormone-blocking drugs to delay male puberty. <laughs> but mum Sabrina is still unsure whether she'll go on to have gender reassignment surgery later in life. It is concerning for Ryan going on blackers because she is, I mean, at 12, she wants to have her own children. And she knows that if she goes on blockers and then transitions, she couldn't because she won't have developed, you know, as a man to be able to do that. She won't have developed sperm. <laughs> she won't have it. For her, it's heartbreaking. There's just not a right answer. So we don't know. <laughs> The summer camp for transgender kids and their families is reaching its big finale. I'm gonna press really hard. The fashion show. <laughs> it's the highlight of the week, and despite all the positive feedback, the camp continues to meet with fierce criticism. Is camp indoctrination? No. Simply because there's such a freedom to be. So it's not like they get there and they put on their go-go boots and you know mini skirts and their wigs and off they go. You know, I, it just it's so open and freeing that they don't have to conform one to another. It's not like oh here I'm at camp so now I must present fully as a girl. In fact, it's the freedom to not. They may be free not to wear skirts and makeup, but most do. And tonight is their last chance to dress as the girls they long to be. Before 
first started coming to camp, I guess I actually was pretty lonely because when I was younger, <clears throat> I didn't have that much friends. Like, we all have one thing in common here, which I don't have in common with my friends back home, but it really changes a lot of things. And so, like, having people who are going through the same thing that you're going through is real comforting. It's really comforting. After four days, time is up for the transgender children. My name is Maxie, and my favorite part of camp was reuniting with all the friends that I haven't seen the whole year. Seeing the friendships that form. Everything about this camp, like going outside, the tire swing, the lake, the pool. I love watching my three kids play and enjoy themselves. I really like how a lot of the first timers here came out of their shell. The thing I like most about camp it's just the people. Camp is officially over for this year. For this year. Hey, come back next year. I would stay here forever if I could. <laughs> it's an emotional farewell, as it means returning home to the problems of everyday life. Camp was the first time Trevor and Carrie got to meet other parents dealing with the same issues. <sighs> Emotional would be my word. It was joyful. It was a lot of learning. I was <laughs> so thankful for the people to be open enough to, to, to share. To know that you're not alone and, <laughs> and uh, there's other people out there dealing uh, with the same issues. I guess it's just, you know, strength in numbers kind of feeling. <laughs> Eight-year-old Lindsay has made her first set of transgender friends. She connected so quickly. Um, I've never seen that type of quick connection with other children, and I think it's because she just recognized in them yeah. her, herself, you know, and she, had, she knew she had allies, like, immediately. She we always safe. say that, you know, she's slow to warm, but N not, not here. <laughs> With junior high school starting once she gets home, time is running out for 11-year-old Maxie to decide whether to come out as transgender. She spent the past few days thinking about whether to tell people at her new school, the secret she's kept her whole life. I feel like they're judging me, a lot of the kids at school, but then whenever someone spreads a rumor about me, I could just say, like, not true, but inside I'm hurting, and I'm like, does it matter? You know, it doesn't matter if I'm transgender or does it change my, the person I am, you know? Since camp, Maxie has settled in at her new school. So four times five is 20, plus one is 21, so this is 21 over four. The 11 year old has been worried about being exposed at school, but she's recently made a critical decision with the help of her parents. Good girl. Oh, oh you gotta sit down, you gotta sit. Okay. I think what scares me the most for Maxie is that as much as there's a group of people okay. that we have found to be supportive, I think society as a whole is really struggling to wrap their head around what this is about. As much as, uh, you know, children that are gay are going to come out and be supported, uh, I think that it's even harder for a child who's trans. Maxie's decided that today she'll finally begin the process of coming out as transgender by speaking with her school principal. When it comes to my friends, when they ask about uh, me being transgender and me being not like them or anything, now I would tell the truth 
that there was actually a case where to a friend, she, she was just like, but there's some rumors going around about you being transgender. And I was like, well, I am. And then that, I was just like, it felt amazing when I said that. And when Was I, that the first time you said to somebody, Just yes. out, yeah. Uh, I did it to another friend after that. You know, it's interesting the, that you would say the word amazing. It was amazing to be able to say yes, because mm -hmm. I feel like I, I love that word. And I think that for your friends and even people you meet, your future friends, I think your comfort level, your ability to say yes very casually, I think will instantly make them feel at ease. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that you're right. I think there's probably friends of yours or maybe even kids who've grown up with you who may want to ask, mm -hmm. but they don't want to make it feel or mm -hmm. make you feel uncomfortable. And I think the more comfortable you are responding, that will put them at ease. Mm -hmm. And then the conversation will go well. So for you to say, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay. When I tell them yes and stuff like that, it makes me feel like it's me telling the story, not them. They're not saying, I'm a boy, I'm a girl, I'm transgender. They're, I'm the one like saying it, and I feel more in control of my life and stuff, and that feels really nice. Talking to Maxie, I saw somebody in front of me who was, I was almost ashamed of my 12-year-old self to watch how uh, confident she seemed, how comfortable she seemed talking about these issues. So I look forward to actually watching her journey the next couple of years and I feel like now I got a little bit of insight into just some of the things that she's going to be probably wrestling with because I do feel like there'll be some bumps along the way, but I feel lucky that we have her in our building. I'm so glad to know that my principal supports me because it's a new school and the principal is like the main part of the school. So to know that he supports me is, makes me feel really good. Most of the school doesn't know because it's a, all the elementary schools that didn't know me. And it's gonna be difficult, you know, telling them and stuff. Are you ready for it? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for it. Although the future is likely to be difficult for kids like Maxi, this next transgender generation are refusing to keep who they are a secret. It sometimes worries me to be out because I know that I'm going to get a lot of hate and a lot of people are going to hate me, and that is going to be really difficult. But what encouraged me to be out was the people that are transgender, the people that want to know about being transgender, and even people that are against it. I really want them to see that people are proud that they're transgender, even if they hate me. I'm not changing who I am. I'm becoming who I am.